Hey guys, what's going on? Sherman here. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome pocket tool I got recently from the Rat Bastard himself, Nathan. This is one of his brand new pocket tools. This is the Enigma Pocket Probe. So we're not going to be talking about these baby bastards I have here just for eye candy. Just kind of rep the rat. But this thing is amazing. It kind of has a slogan, everything you need and nothing you don't. Uh, it's on a Kickstarter campaign right now, running from now until September 21st. So definitely, definitely get in on this if you, uh, if you like what you see, because I guarantee you will not be disappointed. This has quickly become one of my all-time favorite pocket tools. You guys know I have a pretty extensive collection. I'll, I need to do a collection update. But this has quickly become one of my favorites because it is one of the absolute most useful tools that not only I own, but I've ever seen. Because you know how you can look at some and just tell, you know, that's probably gonna be useful. This one probably isn't, but it just looks cool. This is both. This looks cool and is extremely useful. So Nathan was extremely generous to send this to me for the, for the purpose of this review. So big thank you to him. He's a really great guy. Super, super easy to work with. I've uh, made quite a few transactions uh, with him over the past few months. Um, you know, just with uh, these two babies, and I actually have had more. I had to unfortunately sell one to get to pay the bills, but so I've made quite a few transactions through him, and he's just a super great guy. All right, I'm going to go over the specs and functions of the tool. Uh, you can you can tell right off the bat that it's not tiny, but it's also not huge. It's a really nice size, measuring it four and a half inches long, and it is made of quarter inch thick grade five titanium otherwise known as 6AL4V, which most of you guys will be familiar with here in the EDC world. Probably the most common grade of titanium out there, but it's also one of the most high quality. So, something you all know and love. So, this one, uh, I've seen a couple of his that he has done anodized finishes to, but this is just the standard, which I believe all of them are going to come with, with this nice tumbled stonewash finish. Just beautiful. I love the look of this tool. It's nothing, um, it really is like his slogan, you know, everything you need, nothing you don't. Because almost every inch of this tool has a tool, has another function. So, uh, one of the functions right off the bat you guys will, will be able to tell, and it's something you don't see very often, and that is a large set of tweezers. So, very functional. It really utilizes the, uh, the strength of titanium. Titanium has a natural kind of springiness to it, and it can do so without bending or breaking because of how strong it is. And um, so you have these two relief cuts there, giving it a very nice spring to it. It's not hard to use the tweezers at all, but they're very strong. You have very nice jimping on both sides, so you can get in there, easy to control. Um, I'm going to try to show you guys. I don't know how well you'll be able to tell. There is no gap, there's a little gap in the bottom, but with the two heads of the, two parts of the head of the tweezers come together, there's no gap. Extremely, extremely precise. He has a video on his Instagram of him plucking arm hair, or just plucking hair in general. I'm not sure if it's from his arm or not, I hope it is. <laughs> but very precise, and for those of you who are automatically thinking, Sherman, I'm never going to need to use tweezers every day. I don't need tweezers in my EDC. Well, maybe some people don't. I, however, find them to be extremely useful. You know, I work with wood quite often, so I'm constantly getting splinters. I work out in the yard a lot, get splinters there. Uh, working around a lot of uh, steel, grinding, grinding steel, I get metal splinters sometimes. So I actually use tweezers quite often in my, uh, just, you know, every day. So to have it on a tool that I'm going to be carrying every day anyway, extremely useful. Now there are no uh, serrations in there, but the way that this is ground, you can see that it's ground going this way. So just naturally, those striations from the grind, those grind lines, are on a microscopic level gonna, gonna give you little ridges that are gonna grab things like splinters, hairs, very well. Uh, just a few days ago, I was weed eating, and the weed eater line broke off inside the head. Only a tiny, tiny bit of that weed eater line sticking out. Couldn't get it with my fingers. I don't like carrying uh, Leatherman multi-tools or any kind of multi-tools with pliers on me because they're just so heavy. 
So I had this on me, it was in my back pocket. I was able to take the tweezers, reach in, grab the little bit of line sticking out, and I pulled it right out. So something that I would have had to put the weed eater down, gone into the shed, grabbed a pair of needle nose pliers, pulled it out, gone, taken them back. I did it in just a few seconds with this tool. So super, super, super useful right there. Very cool. Uh, these can be used as lanyard slots to put your lanyard. I have a different preferred method of attaching a lanyard, which I'll show you here in a second. Another obvious function right off the bat is the awesome pry bar, which I also use a lot in my everyday and my everyday carry life. And just something that I like knowing that I have. It is very useful. I use this today to pry a paint can lid open. So it's just, you know, super useful for me. It can also be used as a large flathead screwdriver, uh, which you won't really need because of this here in a second. Uh, you do have a, an inch and a half ruler with the longer marks being every eighth of an inch. You have a bottle opener, which is very useful. I also use that. <laughs> and, you know, I think most of you guys will. So very handy right there. One of my, possibly my most favorite feature of this, I don't know, the tweezers is probably my favorite, but a close second, is the awesome double-ended bit that he uses. Don't know where he got these, where he found them, or if he had them made, I'm not sure, but these are made in the U.S. This bit is held in with a stainless steel ball bearing. How cool is that? So what that allows you to do is it allows you to keep this inserted into the tool without the use of O-rings, which I don't prefer, but that's just, you know, until now been the only method to attach these quarter inch bits to your tools. Now when you buy these, he will include two O-rings, which you can attach there, 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 and there to hold in if you have, if you happen to lose this bit or you want to put in a different double-ended bit or just a single-ended, whatever. If you want to attach your own bit, you have that option. But the one that comes with it is just amazing. Because, uh, you know, like I said, sometimes you don't have a choice, but I hate when you have a tool that has the, the bit in it with an O-ring. It sits there and rattles around. So all day long I'm carrying the tool, it's rattling around in my pocket. It drives me insane. A lot of times it's not very secure, so you worry about, you know, you look and, you know, your bit's hanging out like this. With this, it is friction fitted in there super secure that's not coming out so it's a little harder to push out this way i call it the flat end it's easier to push it to push out towards this end the show side as i call it but push it out super cool double-ended you got phillips head flat head you insert it on this show side i kind of do it with the ball bearing facing towards the cutout there and the way this is cut out with a water jet is just ever so slightly tapered. So it doesn't really work if you try to put it in this side. So if you try to put it in this side and you're like, oh, it's broken, he, you know, he didn't fit it right. It's not true. Put it in towards this side, the logo side, and it will not push through. So that way, when you, because that's another problem I have with a lot of these tools. You know, you put in your quarter inch bit and you know, it just like goes through it when you're trying to unscrew or screw something in. It's super annoying. So the way he did this was genius, I think. Just something so simple as just tapering it. So you put that in there. It does not push all the way through. So you can really get down and uh, you know get down to business when, when you're trying to screw something. That sounded that kind of sounded wrong, but you know what I'm saying. So genius, brilliant idea in my opinion. And then this little part right here is a five sixteenths wrench. Doesn't look like it, but it is. And then I was telling you guys earlier, my preferred method of attaching a lanyard because uh, these edges of the tweezers are kind of sharp, which is good because it makes them very precise. You can see how they're ground down on both sides, ground in. Very precise tweezers, but they are a little sharp, like I said, which is good. But if you're carrying a lanyard in these slots, it's going to be sticking up out of your pocket like that. And you know, you got to reach in your pocket or reach to grab the tool. I don't want to stab myself. Not that that would happen, but there's a you know, slightly higher chance. So what I do is I started putting a lanyard inside the quarter inch bit slot. Put the quarter inch bit back in, and there's your lanyard. So I stick it in my pocket like so, 
doesn't stick out, you know, it just has the lanyard. Anyway, because the uh, the pry bar portion is a little bit more rounded. Now, you may be wondering, well, Sherman, that's all yeah, well, fine and good, but how do I use my quarter inch bit now? Well, it's easy. You pop out the bit, slide the lanyard forward, or just take it completely off, and get down to business. When you're done, slide the lanyard back on, put that back in, you're good to go. That's just another way that I have found to attach a lanyard to this tool. And I uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys. Yes. Another close-up look of the finish. And just excellent, excellent fit and finish and detail work on this. See, there's his logo. And then you do have jumping up here. Which you use when you're popping a bottle or if you're using this to pry. Just a little bit extra something to grip onto, along with down here. And one last thing I wanted to mention is could you use this defensively? Absolutely. It's not marketed as such, and I don't recommend it, but I'm, all I'm saying is that you could possibly use this in that role. So when you're grabbing it, you have these two flared out parts right there from the relief cut for the tweezers. They kind of uh, jut out a little bit, using that as a little bit of a guard. And you have those sharp ends of the tweezers you can use to scratch, dig, penetrate, Definitely, definitely get somebody off of you in a pinch if you had to. <laughs> in a pinch. See what I did there? Anyway, there it is, guys. The Enigma Pocket Probe. One of my all-time favorite tools. Highly recommend it. Jump on the Kickstarter campaign. You can donate as much as you want. Or you can get in on doing the thing where you can uh, pledge and get a reward. Which, uh, when you do that, you get this tool at a discounted price. He also offers different packages. You know, you pay a little bit more, you get uh, some more things. You get some more, you, like he has a one where you can donate a little bit more and you get a leather sheath, which is awesome. I'd love to have the leather sheath to go with this. I think it'd be pretty classy looking. But, And I'm sure in the future, if uh, you check out his Instagram page, which I, I will put a link in the description, to his Kickstarter, to his website, and his Instagram account, and, uh, and probably his uh, Facebook and you guys can check out, I'm sure he's going to do a lot of different custom ones, cool colors, anodization patterns. So definitely, definitely check it out. But all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to be doing many more pocket tool reviews, and I will probably be doing a review of his uh, Baby Bastard. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Drop them in the comments box. Definitely check this guy out. Nathan, great guy. Also, thank you so much, buddy, for sending me this. I love this tool. And uh, I wish him luck on the Kickstarter campaign. I'm sure these things are going to sell like crazy. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay safe, stay sharp, and God bless. Sherman614. Peace. All right, I'm going to show you how precise these tweezers are. i just try to get this one right here. All right, one, two, ah! Oh, I lost it. All that for nothing. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right, the things I do for YouTube.